Hey guys, I thought while I was all made up from my um, Halloween Masquerade Mask Challenge video, which I will link up here if you have not seen, um, I would go ahead and do some book reviews. So you're actually going to see like three different book reviews with this look because I thought, you know what, these are perfect books to read in October because they're creepy and I might as well be in costume for these um, you know, book reviews. I just thought it would be kind of fun. So let's go ahead and get into this first book I want to share with you. I've been doing a lot of reading lately and I have not been doing my book reviews. So I thought this was a perfect time. If you are somebody who doesn't read a lot or does read a lot, but if you love a good mystery, thriller, suspense, murder type book, those are the genre that I like to read. And so that is typically what I review on my channel. Um, I will have a playlist also that I will link up here of my book reviews if you would like to see past book reviews I've done. If those are the types of books you like to read, I've got a lot of book reviews for you. Um, but so my cousin Debbie had sent me this book because I read a different book by the same author and said, wow, I really liked her style of writing. I wanted to read more books by her. So lo and behold, I get a package in the mail from my sweet, sweet cousin. She is so thoughtful and just, she's just an amazing, amazing person. And um, so she sent me this book and I was so excited. So I can't wait to share about it with you. So it is called Innocent Victims and the author is Minette Walters. Now, this book is a little bit different. It's not just one book, it's two novellas. So you get to see two different stories in one book. So if you are somebody who doesn't have a lot of time to read and it's like kind of overwhelming to you to look at a book like it's too much, I'll never get through it, this might be a great book for you because it has two different stories in one book. So it's kind of two shorter books in one. So that's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, um, she is, or yeah, she's the winner of the Gold Dagger and Edgar Allan Poe Awards. She's a good author. So I think you're really gonna like her books. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read you the little blurb as I do, and then we'll go from there. So this is from the number one international best-selling author comes two chilling novellas about seemingly normal people driven to commit the most heinous crimes imaginable. Chicken Feed, which is the first one, is a crackling tale based on the true story, keep that in mind, of the chicken farm murder in East Sussex in 1924. Although Norman Thorne never confessed to killing his girlfriend, he was tried and hanged for the crime. Walter's fictionalized account of the relationship is told from the points of view of Elsie and Norman from their first meeting until the eve of Norman's trial for murder four years later. Burrowing deep into an English legend, Walter's creates a suspenseful tale of fiction based on fact, leaving it to the reader to decide whether Norman was guilty of the awful crime. And then in the Tinderbox, which is the second story, Walter's tells the story of Patrick O'Rourden, who has been arrested for the brutal murder of two women, as Shaq turns to fury, the village residents unite against the O'Rourden family, while neighbor Siobhan Lavenham um, remains convinced that Patrick is innocent. Jeopardizing her own position within the bigoted community, Siobhan stands firmly in defense of the O'Rourden name. Yet, when terrible secrets about the O'Rourdens are revealed, Siobhan is forced to ask herself if Patrick truly is capable of murder, and if so, what other lies have been hidden by the O'Rourdens? As the truth unravels, it becomes clear that beneath a cunning facade, someone's chilling ambition is about to ignite. So, the first one, based on a true story. Here's the hard part for me with that first story. You have a hard time deciding whether to feel bad for the accused person or totally disgusted by them. It's like one of those types of stories where you have like heartstrings pulled for this person who is being accused. So I found that to be a very um, interesting aspect of that story and that one's chicken feed um, because when you hear about this girl and what she does to him and just the way she is, you're like, oh, like enraged. Like she drives you crazy. So you can only imagine how crazy she drives him. But then when you find out what happens, it leaves you wondering, like, you feel bad for him because because she was so annoying and not just annoying. It's much more than that. It's uh, very troubling for him because of the way she is. But at the same time, if he did murder her, which you don't know, you have to read it and kind of decide for yourself what you think happened. Um, you like It's like you should be disgusted by him and it, an element of it is disgusting. I mean, you are disgusted by him for an element of it. 
But then part of it, you're like, oh my gosh, like this guy was driven. Obviously, you shouldn't be driven to murder. I don't know. It's just the weirdest, like kind of push and pull in your own mind. Do you know what I'm saying? So that makes that story really interesting. And then the second one, you know, it kind of shows you how, um, you know, well, bigotry and racism and things like that and how they impact a community and how people of the same, um, you know, whether it's race or, you know, um, you know, place of origin, whatever it is, like these people were from um, Ireland and were in England and they were being kind of persecuted in a way. And, you know, the uh, Siobhan Lavenham, I'm trying not saying that right, I apologize, but she is, you know, wanting to stand firm for the O'Rordans who are also from Ireland and stand by their side and, you know, defend them. And then things start to come to light that make her realize, like, if I've been putting myself at risk for someone who didn't deserve it, like, kind of thing. So um, that is very interesting because we have these ties and these um, feelings of loyalty to people for whatever reason. There's many different reasons why people have, you know, feel loyal loyalties to certain people. And when you find out that things are not what you thought they were and how what a how betrayed you feel and um you know kind of like a fool like you blame yourself why didn't i see this why didn't i know i look like an idiot now because i was standing up for these people and they didn't deserve to be stood up for and now you're angry with these people who you were defending so hard because you realize they were like playing you for a fool and it's just a very these are it's a great book because you get those two stories and they're so different they're completely different so it's not even like a matter of like two similar stories they are completely so it is literally like two different books in one book so if that sounds like something you would be interested in because you don't have time to sit and read through a whole book this is a very easy read and um i think you would really like it so perfect kind of creepy the second story doesn't seem creepy but then it gets pretty creepy. <laughs> and so I think that these would both be great stories for this time of year in that spooky mood. And if you read these, I would love to know what you thought of them and what your thoughts are on, you know, um, in the first story, Walter, if you think he is innocent or not Walter, Norman. <laughs> um, if you think he, what, how much do you think he played a part in um, Elsie's death, I guess, is what I would love to know your thoughts on. But um, so that is Innocent Victims by Minette Walters. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this little uh, book review with my costume. <laughs> and um, let me know if you read this. And I'm excited to tell you about the other books that I've recently read. I think you're going to like those too.